The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hi, um, it's Christine Hart, and I don't know if you can hear me very well, but oh, no audio advice. Um, okay, um, okay, I'm wondering if you can hear me really well because what's happened, I haven't, um, this is a new computer I'm using, and I don't know if I'm coming in. I don't know if I'm coming in or not. What happened is Okay, let me see if I can add my guest in, whether he can hear me or not. Hello? That's a group call video. Hello? Hot, and I am trying to come in live um, from London, and I don't know if I'm doing the best of jobs. Um, I hope that I am coming in live from London. So we are just 10 minutes, 10 minutes late. So I am going to check. I'm going to check my sound. I've got a few people in the box. Hopefully. Um, oh, what am I doing now? <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, okay, so let's see if I can bring on my guest. I can't believe my laptop let me down. So um, it's always hard when you're producing yourself. Right, Kat, are you there, Richard? I'm in you, Christine. Hi, good to see you. Hi, yes. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I had a bit of trouble hooking in the studio, but I've got it now. Your, your, sound, is okay. a, your sound is a little bit muffled, actually. Is, it, is that better now? I've moved the microphone in front of my in front of my mouth. Um, it, it is a bit muffled. Am I, am I muffled to you? No, you sound loud and clear. You're going through fine. And this is a, quite a good headset I'm using. Uh, I'll just see if I can look at the equipment I'm using. Are we live at the moment? Yeah, we are live. Uh, we are live, actually. I, I can't, um, your sound is, is not great. Is there any other uh, mic you can find? It's like muffled, you know? Um, let me check it. Is that better? A little bit better. It's going to be hard going for two hours. Yeah. of. Is that better? No, that sounds like you're underwater. Right, I'm on the... I am on the microphone that comes with the headset, and I have nothing better. Oh, right, right. Is that what you used on Friday, Sunday? Yeah, yeah. And that came, came to a fine, didn't it? Yeah, that did. It's just... Um... Right. I've just tried something else. Is that helping? Okay. It's just, it's just a listener won't be able to hear you and, you know... Oh, right. Yeah. That is very worrying. Give me a second. Um... Is that better? Um, to talk for a oh, bit. Okay, I'm going to keep talking while I try unplugging the microphone, uh, putting it in. And I've just, did that help make a difference? A little bit better. Right. I can talk a little slower, but I can't, I can't alter my settings any more than I'm doing at the moment. Okay, yeah, maybe if you talk a little bit slower. Um, that I'll will talk. be difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good when you put your mouth to the mic like that, or when you just put your mouth a bit nearer, it's better. I'm just bothered right. about the, the audience um, hearing you, you know? Um, I, can, I completely understand. I, I apologize. Is that, sir? I'm now holding it actually right in front of my mouth. Yeah, that's a bit better. 
Good. Audio control is audio. Oh, so uh, 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 hang on. My producer's saying something. Um, okay. Um, okay. I, I, I think, yeah, he's saying that audio control mic level is unchecked, but um, uh, according to someone else, they can hear both of you, both of us. Okay, so, so <laughs> I'll carry on. But, right. Yeah, you were a little bit distorted, but we'll, we'll bear with that. I'll, I'll keep my eye on it. Um, yeah, so I had you on tonight, Patrick. We were going to um, talk about Odin and, um, you know, what what's going on there, because there's a lot of interest in that kind of thing at the moment and not a lot of people know what's going on. You know, not a lot of people know about that subject. So, right. I mean, I, I don't, um, I don't know. I had an experience with, I astral travel sometimes and I came across, I kind of traveled up layers and layers and layers and I got to a certain clearing and I saw a giant figure and I was actually just as small as, uh, as one of his lips and right. he, um, I felt so much love from this um, being um, who looked like a, a man, obviously, uh, and Good. kind of older yeah. and right. I felt so much love for him for me and I just felt as if I was just pure love radiating for him and he communicated with me not by voice it was just a knowing um Odin and I'd never heard of anything to do with Odin before um I hadn't right. even barely right. heard the name apart from um Anthony Hopkins I think I'd vaguely seen that film and I thought oh right. that's that's a creature you know to do with that myth blah -de blah and then I saw him fighting something and he had like a sword and he was really um, I, I first thought in my head was oh I hope this is a like a good being um, since I was feeling the love for it and then I saw his face contorted with like anger and I thought oh maybe he's not a good being and then I turned and saw that he was fighting what looked like a long serpent that was wrapped around the earth and this long serpent had bits flying off and it seemed yeah, it seemed like a dragon. It was coming for him yeah. and he was fighting. And then I just naturally turned around and started to fight it myself. And I was really fighting. And then um, I, the, the next day I thought about Odin and I Googled it a bit. And then um, I had a lot of dreams about connecting with other people that felt the same way. And then I spoke to him right. and saying, Father, why, why, have you, why did you abandon me? And he hmm. replied again like as a feeling um that i he'd been there all the time it was me that hadn't bothered to communicate with him so i did try right. then to right. join le like odinist groups and okay. i didn't really feel it's always a scary it's sort of a scary thing because the, the, the problem with odinist groups as you call them and i prefer asa true because it's not just odin it's the whole pantheon of Norse gods and goddesses is that some of them can be very right-wing and exclusionary um, and others are much more inclusive and universalist. So, um, carry on. I, I think that how did it go when you, were, when you tried to contact these different groups? Were you accepted or did you find a resistance? No, I, I mean, one or two guys came on the show and they were good mm. guys, but I found, you know, I did tell my story, it was on mm. Facebook, and I didn't okay. feel many people, it didn't get much of a response, I didn't really get any reply from anyone, and so that okay. felt a bit weird, and then mm. um, I kind of joined the groups and watched their posts, and I thought, it, it, it wasn't really what I was looking for, and then I felt like, I thought maybe it was a bit fake, um, the groups, not Odin itself, but some of the groups right. I thought were a bit fake. And then I listened to some of the leaders of one particular group. And I remember thinking that he didn't really have that love of Odin inside him. And then when he was talking, I heard someone in the audience shout, Hail Odin. And I thought, oh, he does. So it's like, I suppose it's like any other, um, you know, spiritual following there'll be even people that are in charge that don't aren't really feeling it <laughs> there'll be <laughs> certain people yep. <laughs> certain people that are drawn to it who do really feel it so it's yeah, up to me yeah. to find you know mm. yeah but 
can, was, can I sorry. pick up on, on some of the things that you shared so far? Because you, you get given a huge amount of information. Um, and, and there are certain things I wanted to just comment on, if I might. Uh, yeah, in, sure. In terms of what you said. It, you said you recognized it as Odin, or rather Odin said, this is me. Uh, my first question in my mind was, did he ha was he missing one eye? Uh, because for many people, not all people, and, and this is not something that I would say has to happen, um, Odin comes missing an eye because it, of, of a, um, an agreement he made, he lost an eye to gain wisdom. He gave an eye to somebody called Mimir as Mimir as well. And Odin without one eye is a classic image um, across iconog iconography of Odin. Did he have both eyes or did he just have one eye? I don't know. Because I was so tiny, I could only really see these sort I'm, of like giant lips. I didn't really get past them, okay. really. I was really small. Okay, well, that, that's fine. As I said, it's not something that has to happen. I'm not going to say, oh, well, obviously that wasn't Odin then. Yeah. But uh, I think it's, for me, that missing eye is symbolic very much of Odin is about wisdom, right. first and foremost. Uh, because you saw him fighting, and, and I want to come on to that. But when Odin gives the eye up, it's to gain knowledge, to gain wisdom. And, and for me, Odin has always been one of messages of communication of inspiration and that inspiration includes the uh the, the berserker type uh the bear the bear skin wearers or the wolf skin wearers who, who fight on the battlefield in a state of almost rage that inspiration is not a quiet happy inspiration that rage can sometimes be in the middle of the battle rage hmm. um, so when you say is odin necessary a good god because you saw that anger on his face. I would say, Odin's bigger than that. Um, Odin is an overwhelming god. Um, he's not a god who says, there, there, never mind, and pat you on the head. He actually says, get up your ass and get out there and get stuck in. Um, and I don't promise it's going to go well. <laughs> um, Odin has a reputation for um, taking you and, and breaking you, if necessary, to get what he wants out of you, to get the best out of you. Um, we are used by Odin for Odin's bigger purposes. Oh. Um, we don't use Odin for our purposes. That's just like, forget it. He's, as you said, he's bigger than you, and he's bigger than us. Oh. The second thing, which was actually fascinating for me, uh, was you talked about the big serpent, the serpent wrapped around the world oh. uh, that Odin was fighting. Uh, that serpent has a name. The name is Yumangandra. Uh, Yumangandra is the world serpent that wraps around the world. He's, he's related to it in Norse mythology. Um, his, his father is Loki, um, and his mother is a giantess, if I've got the pronunciation right, Angora uh, And he has three children by Angora Bodha. Yomangundra, the world serpent who's so big, world, known world. Uh, Fenrir, the giant wolf, who eventually kills Odin at the end of days, and uh, Hel, the goddess Hel, who is given the land of the dead, which then Christians took as Hel, Helheim, um, and she is the goddess of Hel. She looks half beautiful, half deadly, um, half ugly, almost, um, and, and she is the one who welcomes most people to Hel, to, to death, where they wait to be reborn again. Um, so when you saw Odin fighting the, that serpent, that for me was... Uh, uh, a, a classic, wow, awesome, uh, you, you saw something that most people have to read about. Um, and you weren't doing it with prior knowledge. It, it's not something that most people know about. Uh, so for me, I would say that is a really good um, indicator that your vision, your, your seeing was absolutely spot on, was on the money. I, I don't know if that helps at all. What, what did it mean? Um, what, did, what did it mean? What does it mean that I have to do? I don't think it means anything beyond to say that uh, it, it depends how we see what that fighting was with you and Gondra. Uh, we don't know, or at least I don't know much about you and Gondra beyond the fact that at the, the final battle, Ragnarok, um, when Odin is actually killed by the giant wolf, Fenrir, uh, it is 
Thor, the god Thor, who fights Yomungundra, loses because he's killed, but also wins because he actually defeats the snake. I think he, he walks three steps and falls down dead. Um, snakes and, and the lizards, uh, the, or the snakes or dragons, um, sometimes like the, the dragon at the foot of the world tree, um, can represent destruction, it can represent that constant fight against um, order. We, we as humans and, and the gods seek order, they seek justice, they seek um, balance. But the giants and the, and the serpent um, and other forces are constantly trying to bring things down. It's uh, that, that point of decay and death. And I think the Norse mythology is always about that balance between living and living life to the full and recognizing that we are constantly fighting a battle against the destruction of our society, the destruction of the world, the destruction of um, entropy in nature, the, the decline of the universe, so to speak. And Yomungundra represents that. And, and I think maybe Odin is saying that you, you will never reach a point on Earth where you're not constantly striving. We are not constantly coming up against roadblocks. We're not constantly coming up against something that appears to be working well and then falls over, like your laptop. You know, that is, that is a part of life. And we have to keep the struggle. We have to keep struggling. We, we're not allowed to sit back and go, poor me. Oh. I would say. <laughs> I don't oh, know. right. Interesting. Yeah, I do find that constantly. You know, the attacks this week about, you know, Max Spears and this radio host saying, did I have something to do with yes. his death? Not offering yeah. any um, evidence or even no. to say why he was saying that vociferous yeah. but just to say it really loud and to throw loads of mud um, yeah. at me and I've had that most of my life from you know my mother and my mother used to get all her friends <laughs> when I was a little kid and I was right. really evil and this is what this radio host is doing just throwing as much mud as he could oh she's evil she's bad um, yeah. using I don't you know it was something I knew Douglas Dietrich who got me this radio show basically and I'd approach right. Douglas Dietrich to ask him about um, this Colonel Aquino guy that they're all obsessed with I mean right. so that was how I met him as far and as you I know into, he, seems, he seems a good guy sorry and you, but you walked into uh, if I can use the phrase a shitstorm yeah unknowingly and, and I've had that experience myself and it's incredibly uh, scary at times because for your work, you have to work on the principle that people are going to be helpful because you're approaching them and asking them to open up to you. You have to build up trust with people to be a successful reporter. Yeah. Uh, you can't go to people and be aggressive and defensive and expect them to share their darkest secrets. Exactly. Uh, and, and, that, that, and I think it, I, I sense that, that connection that, like you, we are people who are looking for the truth, we are looking for the light, we are looking for understanding. But what Odin says is, there are people out there, call them demonic, call them giants, call them um, uh, just closed-minded idiots, people who, as soon as they see somebody different, immediately start throwing rocks, they start throwing accusations, uh, and they will be incredibly destructive. And Odin says, guess what? That's life. Um, but Odin will also, as long as you, uh, I'm trying to think, at this point I would, I would pass over from Odin to another of the uh, pantheon of Norse gods, the god Tyr. Uh, do you know who Tyr is? No. Okay. No. Quick lesson, <laughs> if, if I can, if I can. Yeah. Uh, Tyr uh, used to be, possibly, from what we can tell, and again, we don't have the rec written records for this. Uh, but Tyr was possibly the original sky god, and certainly the god of justice and truth. Um, he would be the one who would be called on when there was a trial by combat, for example. Uh, the story with Tyr is that the uh, Fenrir, the giant wolf, started off as a puppy. Obviously, and the gods would feed him because he was a child of, of Loki and therefore part of the family. But he was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they came to the conclusion that if they didn't tie him up soon, he was going to start eating them 
because he was so big that giant wolves tried hard tying him up with ropes and he just broke them. They eventually decided to use a magical rope. I, I won't go into the details, but they were said to the wolf, Fenrir, let us tie up the rope and we'll see if it works. If it does, if it does work, we'll let you go. Yeah. And Fenrir says, I don't believe you. Um, I want one of you to put your hand in my mouth. And if you don't let me go, I'm going to bite down and take the hand off. And it was Tyr, the god Tyr, who said, okay, I will. And he put his hand in the god's mouth. In, in Fenrir's mouth. And yeah, the gods didn't let Fenrir go. And so Tyr lost his hand. And for me, again, I like Odin loses an eye for wisdom. Um, Tyr lost a hand for justice. Justice doesn't mean coming off unscathed. Justice is doing it, coming away scarred, but knowing you did the right thing. Because although he was doing it to fool the wolf, which sounds like the wrong thing to do, he was doing it to protect his family, his tribe, his group from a greater evil. He was prepared to sacrifice a hand in order to, to, to protect his people. Um, and, and again, I think there's a lesson for us from Norse mythology that doing what we do doesn't mean that we are safe. Doing what we do means sometimes we actually have to put ourselves in a position where we lose a hand or lose a limb or, or, or lose something very important to us, but to do the right thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, as you said, yeah, about people thinking that, you know, I was just thinking downstairs, which is why I was late for my show, you know, I was so angry. I was making a <laughs> cup of tea, slamming things right. down, because I'm just angry uh, about all this. And I was thinking, okay. uh, people that, you know, these group of people, are they that stupid <laughs> that they think that anybody you go to interview, you like them? I mean, mostly people you interview, I, I don't like, but, you no. know, you go, but I think they've got some weird view of if you're interviewing somebody, it means you love them to bits, you know, it's kind well, of really... Probably, because that interviewer who was, who was shouting at you and yelling at you only has people on his show he sees with. Oh, I see. Uh, and, and therefore, yes, he, he lives in, the, in an echo chamber. His echo chamber is, you come to me, hold up a mirror that looks like me, and I will, I will be happy. But you came along, Christine, and threw that up in the air. You were yourself, you were authentic, um, you had no hidden agenda, but you are prepared to listen and make your own judgments as opposed to following somebody else's prejudgment. And for some people, that's very threatening because you are independent of their control. Hmm. I couldn't understand about getting abuse for having that guy, Aquino, who, who I was told about through um, certain Americans told me had something to do with mind control. I thought it'd be done to me. So I wanted to interview him. Obviously, I wanted to. And so much abuse and shit coming on. It was like I'd suggested that I Hello? go out there. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. It, yes, I can. Yeah, we just lost it for a second. It was, so, you know, such abuse. It's almost like I suggested that, that I go out there and dance around the maypole with him. I wanted to have, have him on the show to to um, question him about what I had been through to get answers for myself. <laughs> I know it's, perhaps it's selfish. But then I was really attacked for that. But I think that's the, what you do if there's somebody out there that everyone thinks is ooh super, really super evil and pretty on, on a par with Satan. As far as I would say, you get them and, and you pick well, them apart. I mean, surely. Well, absolutely. It, 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 you know, I, I, I despise much of what Trump says. But if I were an interviewer, the big interview would be to interview Trump, to, to actually understand him better. Because whether we like it or not, and I'm, as a liberal, I don't like it, there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who follow him and support him. And, and we need to understand, we can't just write, it off, write off the people we don't like and write off the people that we um, are, are scared of uh. or, or believe are evil. We have to talk to them. That doesn't mean that we are promoting them or supporting them. Uh. And I agree with you, you know, that's journalistic integrity. You, know, that's, you don't get a Pulitzer Prize for just talking to Johnny down the road you get a Pulitzer Prize for uncovering something that people don't want to know about. 
Uh, and, and again, I say that it, it would, it's almost part of the written, the unwritten conflict of your work, isn't it? That you're yeah. going to find, you talk to people that everybody else goes, how could you? They do say, how could you? Yeah. I'm not coming across as judgmental, but, no. um, that, and, and because I've been involved in, in similar sorts of fields, um, I have a, a lot of empathy and sympathy for where you're coming from. Um, you have to get your hands dirty. Hmm. You have to, and and I feel it, the end of the day, the person who I actually despise the most is the person who is sh shouting and screaming at you. They were the most close-minded. They were the most uh, petty hmm. uh, because they lack the ability to, to understand the bigger issue. So we're, we've gone off the track from Odin. Is, Odin? Yeah. Um, we have, uh, but no, I've got plenty of questions yes. to ask. I'm worried about the sound because the sound is ter it's terrible. I'm wondering, should I not ring, maybe ring you, um, ring you through again? Why don't I give you a call? Uh, call me, and we might get a better line. I'll, no, I'll I'll ring you again because I don't yes. think that you can um, ring me. So if you hang up, and then I'll ring you again, and it might be That's a better fine. connection. Okay. okay. Talk to you in a minute, Christine. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Right, listeners, I'm going to ring Richard again because he's obviously got a lot of interesting things to say and um, I'm not hearing him so great. Um, so let's hope this works. Let's hope he's still on the screen, which um, isn't fantastic. I'm wondering if I can drop... Oh, no, he's gone. He's gone. Okay, okay. Um, I think I've got the studio. Okay, so let's see if I can... Bring him on again, and we'll be able to hear him a little bit better. Fingers crossed. Right, fingers crossed. I'm back. It's a little He's bit back. better. <laughs> I'm I'm closing down other programs on my laptop to see if that helps. Yeah. Uh, right. Hope so. I, there's nothing nothing else I can close down without closing the whole laptop down. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll bear right. with it. Uh, yeah. As you were saying, I mean, I interviewed mm. some serial killers. The last one was Kenneth Bianchi. And you do feel you do have a sort of dirt on your soul for going close to them. You know, it's a sort of a um, you don't come off unscathed from getting um, close to no. them. It's no. what, yeah, you pick because you see their humanity. You you actually you do the scary thing of all is look behind the mask of evil and see another human being. Hmm. And you also get very close to their crimes and what they've done as well, which is, That's you know, true. which is horrible to see it really, really close up, which I think is the worst thing. You feel tainted by it. Even when you come away from them, it's still there. I don't know if I'd have been able to interview that Aquino guy um, because I had some email contact. I said all in all, there was about three emails where I, I asked him, did he have anything to do with my um, childhood? And then um, eventually I, I said, you know, um, there was a break then for a while and he had attacked me psychically and it was quite aggressive. I didn't sleep for about three nights where he pulled me out of my body. And then right. I think he was talking to someone else and I thought, right, I, I give myself a talking to have some balls. And so I sent another email <laughs> saying, you know, would you come on the show? But I did have it in my mind. Would I be able to um, withstand that? Because it's like, you know, you've got someone's right. voice in your ear. He would have yeah. basically got a real hold on me by hearing my <laughs> voice. And I thought, you know, if you can attack just by an email to hear someone's voice, you'll be able to really nail them down. And so it's yeah. like sending them a picture of myself. And so I wasn't sure I could do it anyway, really. I but understand. I, yeah, I got so yeah. badly attacked, but I really... Um, yeah, I really don't care. I really don't care for that. And somebody said something about, oh, you were going to have him on your show not caring about the fallout. Now, if somebody doesn't want to listen to it, they don't have to listen, do they? You know? No, no. And I can't believe you were going to have Aquino on the show and fawn over him, for example. You weren't doing it to no. promote his work. So, <sighs> yeah. yeah. Close-mindedness is close-mindedness. We yeah. can't... We can't choose how other people respond to what we do. Um, and, and I think, coming back to the, the bigger topic, for me, actually, one of the things I love about the, the Norse gods is there is this bloody-mindedness about them. Yeah. Uh, Loki, for example, does whatever he likes. Uh, 
eventually he gets into real trouble. He causes huge, huge problems with the other other gods and goddesses, but he also solves those problems. Oh. He is the, the, the shamanic figure who upsets our lives. Um, I'm not a, a worshipper of Odin. Uh, I, I know you have, a, there's at least one person I spoke to recently who said, he, Loki is the one that she feels most affinity to. And I have a huge respect for that. I am an Odin's man. Um, I, my, that's in my name, it's the name I chose. Um, I came to Odin through the runes. Um, I was living with a witch, in fact, and she tried to introduce me to Tarot. I couldn't, couldn't connect to Tarot at all. But she had a set of rune stones, and it was like coming home. Really? Uh, and, and for me, my path into the North world, into the North understanding, is, is the runes, divination, the magic, the wisdom, uh, the knowledge, and, and Odin as the wanderer, the wisdom seeker. It, it calls to me always. Uh, I, I, you can see the Vikings TV series, I assume, all those big hulking guys going off with wielding swords and carrying shields. Um, and, and all the girls love those big guys, the muscles and the, and the beards and whatever. Uh, do you know the show? Vikings. No, um, no. I, I've, I've right. heard of it. I don't watch it. Is it good? Okay, uh, well, it's got rave reviews. Um, it's the, I think it's the History Channel's behind it. Uh, and it's got some very good storylines. I, I, I do like it. But I have to say, my, my dark secret is that there's one character there called the Seer. He's blind, he's not particularly attractive, he lives in the dark, and uh, he is inscrutable. He is the one who fascinates me most. He is the one who sees beyond, who, when the, when the, the war lead comes to him and asks him questions, he gives the answers that the other guy doesn't want to hear. He doesn't give, he doesn't say what somebody wants to hear, he gives the truth, and that truth is often very uncomfortable. Um, and that, to be a seer, to see beyond, to have the words of knowledge and understanding, that has always been my path. I don't travel astrally like you do. I don't see with an inner eye, but I, I can sense and I know and understand things that I should. Um, I've also been told by a very, very good friend that she can read people. She just looks at them and she can read them and she'll tell people that I'm one of the very few people she cannot read. Um, it's like I've got the shield around me. And I think that's, again, my psychic differences as such. Um, it's that I might be blind to what's going on, but my shield is so strong that I, I don't appear to be there. And I think that is one of Odin's gifts to me, um, along with the wisdom of the runes, uh, that rune poem, I think you did you look at that rune poem that I, I linked to? No, I didn't. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no, that, that's okay. Well, I put it up there and, and it was there for you to, to look if you had the time. Uh, if I can talk a little bit about the runes. Um, I use what's called the Elder Putak. Uh, Putak is just basically like runes, what alphabet is to the, the first two letters, alpha, beta, of the Greek alphabet. Uh, the runes are, the first six runes are Sehu, Uru, Durizaz, Ansus, Radio, Kenaz, Putak. Uh, and there are 24 of these runes divided into three groups called apes, uh, which means not eight, but eps, which is like a, a grouping or a clan. Now, those, those letters each have a surface meaning, like the first letter, Sehu, is cattle. It has a deeper meaning, cattle equals wealth, and it has a number of uh, spiritual wisdom meanings like uh, resources, gold, um, who we are, and about sharing. And, and the root, therefore, have got layers of meaning. And I've written a poem, a four-line verse for each of those runes, uh, to try and dig out and, and, and think about the meaning. And, and, and for me, the runes are more than just letters. They are 
uh, a communication. They communicate both ways. They listen to me and they teach me. And they change me. Um, I, I listen to them and I learn from them and they show me a bigger world. Um, and, and through that, I've also learned about the gods and goddesses, uh, learned the culture, more the culture of the North people, um, which is not a Christian culture. Um, and I have learned more about the idea of community, about the tribe, um, about what it is to live on the edge all the time, to know that disaster can strike, um, illness, through um, war, through accident, um, through famine, um, to understand that we depend upon our close brethren um, because at any point we may be standing in a shield wall, so to speak, and also that we live in close communication with the with the gods and the goddesses and the forces of nature which are alive and expect us to respect them. We can't just go into the field and say, oh, pretty field. We are walking into a world of nature which is alive and conscious and it demands respect from us. So for me, that's what being a rune man, being an Odin's man is about. Hmm. Do you, I mean, I've got some runes. Do you just, what hmm. I was doing them, if I was upset, I was hmm. having a bowl and putting my fingers in and picking out one and reading from it. Is that what you're supposed to do? Or have I got that wrong? Uh, oof. I, I, I hate ever saying to somebody, this is what you're supposed to do. We don't know. <laughs> um, if it works, I'm very pragmatic. If it works for you, go for it. Um, okay. Um, there is a, a writer, uh, I can't to remember his name, who wrote about, from the Roman period. I think it might have been Tacitus. And he talks about the Germanic tribes, and he says that they were great into uh, using divination. And he doesn't give a lot of detail, but he says they would cut the branch of a fruiting tree or a nut-bearing tree, They'd, uh, a twig, or they'd split it lengthways, and they'd make marks on it, on a number of these branches, and then the, the father of the family, or the king, or the, whoever the leader was, would throw these branches on the ground, and they'd pick up three, and that would give them a yes or no answer. And I, therefore, I do use a three card, a three rune spread, straight out of the tarot. I use a past, present, and future. Um, one rune starts off by saying, what brought me to this, this, this place? The question. The next one is, what is the key issue around this question? And the third rune is about what I might be expecting, what I should be aware of going forward. Oh. Runes don't predict the future. I say tarot doesn't predict either. It's none of this, um, you're going on a long journey business or you will have five children. Um, the the idea of, of fate is not fixed in, in the Norse understanding. We create our fate as we meet the choices we have to make. Uh, there's a rune called Purpro, uh, which is an obscure rune. It's in the middle eight, and it could mean a lot cup, a dice cup, or it could mean uh, a womb, or it, it could mean fate, whatever that means. And the poem that I wrote for that is from Erd's Dark Well. Erd is one of the three norms, couldn't have three fates. From Erd's Dark Well is Orlog, our destiny, spun. So from Erd's Dark Well is Orlog spun. Our past, the path we have become. We have become who we are by the choices that we made in response to the choices we were given. We, have, we don't have absolute freedom, we only have the freedom to choose the choices we are given. And those choices eventually will become the doom or fate of our death. And that, that final choice could just be to live or die. And uh, how, how's that going? So the idea that I always have is that 
the runes are current spotters. They tell me where the winds are. The runes tell me where the sea current is. They tell me if there is a reef appearing. Um, they tell me where the stars are that I should be following. They give me choices. They give me understanding. But ultimately, it's down to me to decide how I respond to it. So if you're picking up a rune and saying to the rune, tell me what to do, the runes aren't going to be very happy because they're saying, but it's you, you know, it's your choice. I'm not going to be blamed. You know, I don't want to be blamed for the choices that you make. But if you pick up a rune and say, give me understanding, give me insight, what am I missing? What should I be aware of? Then the runes will go, great. Yeah, let me help you. So I think it's more of a case of how do you see the runes as opposed to how you use runes. If you let the runes teach you, they are a source of wisdom. If you use the runes to live your life, they will lead you astray because they will take you for a fool. Does that help? Yeah. So how many times do you use them a, a week, every day? Um, it, it varies. Um, some days I can go for months not using the runes because there isn't an issue that's, that's bugging me, so to speak. Um, yeah. I, I also have actually designed my own deck of oracle cards, um, which is non-tarot, non-spiritual, non-angel, uh, a 52-card deck. I, I tend to use those more because I'm developing them so to speak. There's a workbook with them, um, and I use them with other people. So, bizarrely enough, I don't use the runes much now for different work, or that kind of under... I tend to use my other cards. Uh -huh. What I am doing, and this requires meditation on, on a regular basis, is, right, is, is putting together a series of rune talks, and seeing the runes as a, a path of wisdom where each rune builds on the next and, and teaches us about how to live, how should we then live. Um, the first eight et runes is about everyday life wisdom, starting off with sharing what we have. The next set is about how we deal with adversity and struggle, because the first three runes of that second set, are, the first three are all about difficulty, and the last set is about the deeper spiritual, mystical um, understanding, the getting to grips with the life, the world we cannot see, the world of the gods, the world of fate, the world of uh, the, nine world, the nine realms, for example. So for me, I'm actually gone beyond from using the runes as cards, so to speak. And now I'm used to letting the runes teach me and, and talking with the runes about wisdom. So, if, if I'm not using them for divination, it's not because I don't have a connection to them, it's because I, I want to go deeper. Mm. Is there a book that you can recommend that is quite good about I explaining what each of them are about? I, di I did have a book, but it was cut me, in fact, I have a book, but it's quite basic. There's like one paragraph on each rune. <laughs> it's kind ah, of, seems right. to me, a bit basic. I'm Oh my goodness, I have a bookshelf downstairs of books about the runes, or half a bookshelf, um, and I'm constantly buying them. Um, I, I think that what I would like to, rather than try and, and remember them or go and dig out my books and bring them up, I, I would, if I can, type up a list after this is over, or if you show me where I can type it, and leave a list for people to look at. The only thing I would say is don't buy Ralph Bloom's book on the rooms. Um, Ralph Bloom is a, I'm going to be honest, kind of a con artist who found the runes, created a blank rune so he could get 25, and wrote this bizarre book that's half based on what some understanding of the runes are, and some of it's completely made up. Um, and it's incredibly misleading, and it annoys the hell out of me when people say, oh, I've got this excellent book, it's Ralph Bloom's book. I say, um, yeah, okay, put that away and let me show you some, some other books. I know it sounds horribly snobbish, and I do apologize, but Ralph Bloom 
if people say, I have Ralph Boom, I say, please get rid of it, burn it, whatever, use it as a file paper, but find some better books. Um, I started with um, Ed Thornton, um, but I've actually found him a little bit too right wing in some places. Uh, personal judgment, he's actually incredibly got a lot of real deep understanding of the um, what's, what's his name, sorry? Um, I think it's Edward Thorson. Dawson. I'm not very good. Yeah, I'm not very good on remembering this and I don't want to power up my Google because that'll take the power away from my computer. Um, the, all the books that I want to show you are in another room and that wouldn't be appropriate for me to go and get them. Um, you know, I'm actually very bad on names. I cannot, off the top of my head, give you a book. All I can do is to put together a list after this is over and give recommendations. Oh, yeah, uh, that'd be fantastic. I also have um, a website which hasn't been touched for a while. Um, it's Odin Thrall, Odin Thrall, my surname, dot co dot uk, um, and that has some resources as well, including this room poem. Um, so if your listeners are interested, um, I can recommend that because it has got some resources, some use, and as I say, it does give a list of books that, that I have found useful. So our listeners would want to know um, about mm. gods, and they spoke about Anu and this kind of thing. I mean, when I had that encounter with Odin, I, of course, <laughs> grew up a Catholic, and you know, okay. I mentioned it to friends, they were like, oh, that's not the real God. And then I had mm -hmm. a few people on the show, I had um, Coetting, Eric Coetting, who also um, says he's an Odinist. Um, he does do this sort of demon um, thing, um, which I got confused about. Um, demon? Demon thing? He talks to the, as he told me, he talks to the Abrahamic demons. I, d I okay. don't yeah, so I don't know why he'd want to, but he's yeah. he asks them for things. Um, so right. I didn't really understand that. And then, you know, a lot of people said, oh, that proves it, you know, that's evil, you know, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I know, I hate that judgment. It always kicks back yeah. on my darling mother <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. when I was a kid. Um, but so... What I didn't understand, they were going, oh, there's only one God, and but then I went to talk to a priest um, at a Catholic church where I sometimes go, and yes, for listeners that are saying, oh, you're abused by priests, well, I was, but I still um, find Catholic churches attractive, I like the... Um, the crosses in there. So sometimes I go along and I sit there on my own. Um, I don't really go to um, the mass. I sit there alone. And it was a priest that I know pretty well. And I said to him, you know, I didn't know there were other gods. And he said, oh, yeah, there are. And um, he, 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 you know, doesn't seem to be in the Catholic teachings that there are other gods. So I wondered, with the Christian viewpoint, is right. Odin, who they call God, or Jesus, do you think? Oh, my Lord. Okay. I, I would just step back and, and think, think of a, a belief structure, like a, a religion or a spirituality or whatever, like a tree. And that tree has roots. It has a, a trunk, it has branches, it has leaves, it has flowers, and it has fruit. We'll assume it's a fruiting tree, like an apple tree or a pear tree. And an apple tree is not the same as a pear tree, though there are similarities. And an elm is not an oak. Uh, therefore, although they are all trees, they are not, you can't overlay them and say, well, an apple tree has got fruit, therefore a pine cone is a fruit, for example. Uh, though they are both ways of spreading seeds. The apple has got the seeds inside, and the pine cone has got the seeds on the outside. Oh. Therefore, when people say, is Odin Anu, for example, who's the Sumerian god, or is Odin Jesus, I wince inside, because it's like saying, well, is an apple a pear? Oh. And, well, kind of, in that they're both fruit, but they taste very different. Um, there isn't, okay, I, I was brought up Roman Catholic, 
like you. Uh, I also have spent quite a lot of time within the Anglican Church. Um, I even did some clergy training. So to that extent, I, I do not knock the past where I came from. I don't throw stones into wells where I once drew water. I've oh. learned a lot from Christianity. I've learned a lot from my Catholic upbringing. Um, and I, like you, I go into a Catholic church and I feel that presence. Uh, but I relate every day on the divinity side of things to the Norse pantheon. And for me, that means the whole shebang. It means understanding how all the gods work, how they fit within the nine worlds, how they fit within the, 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 the giants, uh, the creation story, the Norse mythology of um, Niflheim, the world of ice, and Muspelheim, the world of fire, um, and Ymir, the first giant being. And I look at it as a whole and understand how each of the parts relate to each other. What I don't do is pick out Odin, for example, and um, almost like uh, crossbreed him with Anu or... or uh, splice him into Christianity and say, well, you know, let's attach him to, to Christianity or to Catholic faith and, and make him a Jesus-like figure. Um, Odin, funnily enough, was hung on a tree uh, oh. for nine days. He was pierced by a spear, uh, according to the mythology, but that was what he did to get the runes. For nine days I hung on the tree, I was not given food or drink, I was offered myself to myself, pierced with a spear, and then I saw the runes, and I fell screaming and picked them up. And that's how he found the rune for us. That's the, myth, the mythos of Odin with the runes, as that's why he is the rune giver. But there isn't a salvation in Norse mythology. There is no saving. There is no original sin. Uh, we were made by the gods from trees, by the, by the sh seashore, and we were endowed with our properties of sense, of um, understanding, of speech by the gods, and then cut loose and told to get on with it. Um, there is no sense of a chosen people, for example, that you get within Christianity built on the Abrahamic um, contract of, you know, you are my people and I will make you my, my, uh, a special people more numerous than the stars in the sky. Nope, that doesn't happen in the Norse mythology. Uh, come Ragnarok, most of the world will get destroyed. Some people will be saved, hidden in the world tree, and they will start anew in a world of peace. Um, so it, it's... <sighs> I think it's, it's, you have to make, a, you, I actually had to make a jump. I had to stop being a Christian. I had to say, I'm not even going to think about good and evil. I'm not going to think of demons and gods. I am going to open myself and say, what is this tree about? What, what, am I, what is the fruit it feeds me? What, is the, what are the branches? Hey, what do they contain? What are the life that lives in the branches? And from that, I ended up with a wholly different perspective on life, which gave me the chance to critique the, Catholic, the Catholicism and the Anglicanism I'd grown up with and the, and the presuppositions that I grew up with in terms of what was right and what was wrong, for example. Oh. I, so I don't really... Um, I want to understand, um, because I was brought up with... Who, who were they actually... Um, worshipping in the Bible is I just want to put Odin in that little um <laughs> I suppose I know. To do what you you said not to. <laughs> and and see, and very, I think what what's dangerous is is that then Odin, for example, gets coloured by how we perceive God. And rather than letting Odin say, This is who I am, it it'd be like you all you ever known is a priest, for example and a Buddhist monk comes to you, and you say to the Buddhist, so what are you? He says, well, I'm a kind of priest. Oh, that means you do sacrifices at an altar, does it? Uh. Uh, and the Buddhist monk is going, no, no, I teach people about peace. Oh, you mean sort of relationship with God? Well, no, because I'm a Buddhist. We don't have a God. Well, then how could you be a priest? Well, I'm not a priest. I'm a monk. But monks believe in God. And you can see how that argument, the Buddhist monk 
and the Catholic priest are two very different beings. Mm. But they are both paths of wisdom. Mm. But if you go to a Buddhist monk and expect to be taught by as a, as a Catholic, you're going to be really upset. Uh, and if you go to a Catholic priest and say, teach me Zen meditation, the Catholic priest is going to say, it's not my field. Um, so I would say, try not to relate, try not to lay them over and, and look for similarities. Rather, see them as two doorways. All right. Two very different paths. Two very different paths and ways of looking at the world. But they both teach us wisdom, a deeper wisdom than the world that we touch, we smell, we taste, and we feel, and we see, and we hear around so, us. So what happened then? Why have we got these two? I mean, why aren't we, as human beings, on this little um, piece of soil or whatever it is we're this stuck This ball on, of earth flying around the sun, yeah, at a million miles an hour. <laughs> why, why don't we all have um, one way of seeing the supernatural? How did it come about that there's so many ways of um, seeing... Because we are infinitely creative. Because we love images and we love our language. Um, if I say the word apple to you, you will immediately have in your head an image of an apple. It will look a particular way. It will be in a particular place. It will, you will taste an apple. Do you know how many hundreds of different varieties of apple there are? Mm. There, 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 there's Granny Smith's. There's Russet's. Uh, there are um, Golden Delicious, uh, there are um, Pippins, and that's just a few, at each taste, very different. Cooking apple, you would not eat a cooking apple raw, but it works brilliantly in an apple pie. Mm. Variety is what is, surrounds us, um, but religion wants to control us. Spirituality is us meeting with God. Religion is crowd control. Now, that's quite cynical. Uh, we live in, we each of us have an individual personality. We each have individual needs of what we are and what we need because of our nature, because of our upbringing. Uh, one of Odin's names for me is Allfather. I had a crap relationship with my dad. <laughs> it was appalling. So I found one of the things I relate to with Odin is the Allfather. And that for me is wow, <laughs> you know, that, that's just like a light bulb for me. And I know it's hugely personal to me. And the way I see All Father is intensely, intensely personal to me. And I'm quite happy with that because you know what? This is my life, it's nobody else's life. But I also live in a community. And when I sit down with other people who are also Asa true, people who share some of my beliefs, there is always a degree of negotiation as well. Somebody who says, well, I'm a, a Lokitru, I believe in Loki. Some of the members of the group are going, how could you? He's awful, he's evil. And I'm saying, but this person is part of our community. We have to understand where they're coming from. We, we can't just exclude the people that think differently. Um, and because we are individuals and different, we will always have that tension between wanting to be finding people like us but always being brought into contact with people who are different. And I think what happens is people have gone off and, and explored and come back with knowledge of the other world. But that other world is incredibly complicated, as complicated as ours. Uh, somebody once said that uh, describing God is like 10 blind people in a, in a darkened room t uh, feeling an elephant. One person feels the trunk, another person feels the tail, another person feels a leg, another person feels an ear. And they all say, this is an elephant. But they all talk about different parts of the elephant. I would go one step further. I would say there's a room full of different kinds of elephants. And each of the people is touching different elephants. So one person's touching an African elephant and says, well, this big flappy thing is huge. The one touching the Indian elephant goes, well, actually, it's not that huge, and it's this shape. And the one touching the pygmy elephant goes, well, actually, it's really small, and it's down here. And they're just talking about the ear. Oh. So the variety is because each of us is different. I thought that it was maybe that in the Bible it says about um, the creator God sending out 
lesser gods um, to rule over each nation. I thought that mm. might make sense with Odin is supposedly god of the Norse Aryan kind of race. Um, I think it's true that tribes tend to have their own deities. Um, and, and the thing about the Norse religion is actual fact there is no one Norse religion. Um, there are a variety of understandings that even we can get from the little knowledge that we have. Like I talked about, Tyr, for example, was originally the sky god. And, and, but Odin now is, is seen to be the chief god. But he's not, he's not uh, like Zeus, for example. Odin is not Zeus, who sits on a throne and tells everybody else what to do. You know, the and do you, believe in, do you believe in Zeus? Well, again, I don't believe that there is a man called Odin with a patch over his eye who's going to come up and shake me by the hand and says, well done. But Odin is one of my... We was, I'm going to get, step back a bit because I'm always grappling with this, so you're asking a really good question. We use words to communicate. The divine uses images to communicate with us. Except those images aren't necessarily a picture, like you know, a picture of a horse or a picture of an apple. The images are of an angel or a deity or a demon or a god um, or a goddess. But the universe is communicating to us in a way that we can understand. I don't think we could actually understand or most of us would be scared silly if we actually met the universe in its total grandness all in one go. So therefore, these beliefs, these structures are a mediation between us and the, our source, which is the universe, oh. the force behind the universe. At, at its deep level, I am... Um, much more, much more of a mystic than anything else. And the mystic says, that which we cannot speak, thereof we must be silent. I'm actually quoting a philosopher there. Um, the, the source that we come from when we are born, the source to which we return, ultimately our souls return to when we die, uh, that, that which energizes everything, is actually unknowable to our minds because it is so much bigger and trans-dimensional than us. But the deities that we talk about, the philosophies, the religions, the images, they are then the, the conversation that we have with the universe to understand that. Oh. Does it, I, I, and that's the best that I can ever say is why I'm comfortable with what I do because I recognize my, my beliefs, my understanding is personal. There's a lot of it which is called UPG, unverified personal notice. It oh. is my understanding. You had a vision of Odin. Um, i kind of jealous because you had that. But it was your vision. It's not my vision. I cannot go away and say, well, if I had that vision, I would do X, Y, or Z. Or, I have learned this from that vision. It's not my vision. It's not my truth or teaching. What I can say to you is, there's some amazing elements that I relate to. And we can share that. You say, you can talk to me, and we can share your experience of the divine. Uh. And it is yours. You have touched the divine. Uh. But... It is yours, ah. and it's up to you to work out how that affects your life and how you move on with that. And you know, I, someone, people like me are very happy to walk with you and to share our understandings. But ultimately, I can't say to you, you've got to do this or got to do that. Find a way um, to communicate with him more and to live <laughs> more in that. And then I, because I, I, I do follow shamanistic principles and then they okay. said you know as a true as true is a way of uh, shamanic and i wondered how it's different from the normal shamanic um which is just basically kind of um journeying connecting with nature 
I wondered how as true is is different. But, well, good question. Again, it depends upon which flavour. <laughs> Some people, as are true, are strictly into doing blots, cymbals, um, re almost reconstruction what, how they believe the Vikings would have lived. Oh. And they'll, they'll hold a feast, they'll, they'll drink the mead, they'll pass the horn, they'll praise their gods, and they are very comfortable with that, like going to church. You know, people who go to Mass, kneel, uh, say the prayers, sing the hymns, take the, 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 the wafer on their tongue, and they're happy with that. Uh, somebody else will say, well, I'm a monk, or I'm a mystic. I spend my time praying and meditating, and I have visions with God. And Teresa Avila is a completely different animal to Mr. Joe Public at Catholic Church, but they are both Catholic. You, therefore, want to explore the more, as you call it, shamanic, stroke, mystical path. Um, again, interesting enough, I have done some work on this. There is a, a, a fascinating author, whose name I cannot remember, who's done some work with the um, Eight Star Cross. Um, i trying to think, you take one, two, three, th that's six, four, eight, yeah, that's right, um, four, if you take four sticks and make them into a star, sorry about this, I'm, my brain was freezing, take four sticks and make them into a star, you end up with eight limbs, and there are nine worlds, and if you put Midgard, our world, Earth, in the middle, Middle Earth, Midgard, is where it um, that came from, and then you arrange the other world, nine, eight worlds around it, you have a formal Slepnia eight-legged horse that Odin rode that you can use to travel across the world tree, Yggdrasil, to the different worlds and follow what it effectively is a shamanic path. There are certainly indications that Norse, mytho Norse Vikings shared understandings and communicated with the Sami people of Finland, what we now call Finland. And the Sami people are much more related to uh, the like, people like, for example, the, the Inuit, uh, the more tribal people who, who follow the reindeer um, and who are much, much more shamanic based. The Norse is like a halfway house between Christianity, which is very, very defined and set, and a shamanic non-deity belief structure which says the shaman says do this do that and does work with with people um if you want and again if you want to at some point I, i'd be very happy to sit down with you and and talk you through that kind of understanding but in a way we're talking about something that isn't considered to be mainstream norse mythology most people follow believe it's all about being a viking um, well, those and, groups, that's, yeah. yeah, and I thought this is not really what I'm looking for. No, and, and, and they, they do tend to be more, and please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they are all, they do tend to be more the more racist kinds or the more exclusive kinds of people because what they use the Norse religion for is to create an identity that makes them feel special. Oh. Whereas for me, the Norse belief structure the deity the gods are about deepening wisdom and becoming more effective within the world oh. very very different approach like you a much more mystical shamanic um dynamic oh. so, so what is this can you, you can't remember the author of this of this book uh, no again i'm, I'm sorry I, all my information is somewhere else and um, I, I would actually have to walk away, and I don't want to do that. Right. Okay. I'll just make a note. Um, hmm. What did you call it? An eight. Um... It's a. If you take take a think of an eight-sided star, like the kind of star you, you uh, like a snowflake. Uh huh. It basically uh, think of it. Take a cross, then rotate it by forty-five degrees, uh -huh. and lay a, lay another cross over it. You end up with eight limbs, all crossing in the middle. Right. Uh, I've actually done work where I have put the runes, the 24 runes around it, so each of the limbs has got three runes. Um, I've also built on this author, then also looked at how the different nine, wor eight worlds, and Midgard in the middle, the other eight worlds 
are arranged around the edge like the eight worlds of um, Hinduism and the eight worlds of uh, Taoism. Is it Taoism? Um, and I've also done some work. I've actually done uh, a casting, creating a circle. You know how you do uh, creating a circle when you're doing shamanic work sometimes or, or yeah. magic work? You open a circle uh-huh. and you, you normally have the four, uh, the four corners. Yeah. Uh, the four direct north, south, east, and west. Um, and again, I have done some work with a shaman on that. Well, this has got eight corners, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and it's based on, I've actually put together a ceremony where you open the world, you open your circle with all eight worlds and then the, the world you stand in the middle. Um, and and we, I've actually done this with, with um, a very dear friend of mine um, as a protection. And it's incredibly powerful to do. It's a way into a mystical understanding of those nine worlds. So again, very happy to, to share that with you um, if you wish. Yeah, excellent. So... What, what does it mean? Is it the same as the nine doors of Midgard the, um, to travel the... Um... Uh, exactly, yeah. Those ni- the, um, actually, that's actually the title of a book by um, Edward Thorson, The Nine Doors of Midgard, which and is, is his te- training book. Um, it's quite deep. It's not what I would recommend for a beginner, unless you're like me who loves books. Um, it can, you can, it's, there's a huge amount to take in, and it's like eating a very rich... Um, Christmas cake, <laughs> packed full of fruit, um, but not easy to digest. Um, each of the worlds, each of the nine worlds, has their own character, their own aspect. They are not literal places. You can't geographically define them and say, well, Asgard goes above Vanaheim, for example. Um, they are not defined geographically. They are defined by their character. So Muspelheim is a land of fire. Niflheim is a land of ice, but attached to Niflheim is Helheim, where the dead go. Um, Asgard, the land of the Asia, is different to Vanaheim, where the Vanya live, for example. Oh. Um, Jotunheim is where the giants live. Svartalfheim, dark elf world, is where the dwarves live, um, and so on. And each of those has got a flavor, a character, an understanding, a purpose. And I think, again, understanding how they all interlink and work together is, is part of understanding the wisdom of the Norse path of, of Asatru. Oh. So, so you like learn about... Um, what, what does that book consist of, The, the Nine Doors? Just the... Uh, it would teach you how to, to journey them, or...? Um, I have to say, I didn't get very far into it. Uh, I got sidetracked onto other issues. He, um, Edred is much more into teaching you rune magic, um, which is how to use the runes as a magical tool. Oh. Um, there is a branch of rune magic called Galdra. Galdra is um, spoken or sung, use the runes, where you sing the rune, and you can also adopt a pose relating to the rune, and you become one with the rune and then you learn to channel that rune's power each rune is different each rune has a place a purpose and a use um, and edward is much more into the understanding the mystical power of the runes oh, oh. And, and the doors of midgard though is, is about using those runes then to travel and to learn how to access those powers um, i've done some work on galdra but it's not the magical purpose of the runes, I've tended to shy away from because, <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm not into wielding power at that, at that kind of level. Oh. I don't want to become a magician. I am a rune mage. I know how to use the runes, but I'm much more of a um, knowledge and wisdom person as opposed to a throw thunderbolts oh. kind of person. Um, but I'm sure I will get back to it again and, and, and follow it. Um, Carry on, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about the nine worlds and, and what they are. Complete ignorance. I suppose I'll have just... Right. Well, I, I, well, again, but if you, if, you, if you, for example, if your only introduction to Roman Catholicism was seeing a crucifix, yeah. um, just think how confusing it is when somebody starts talking to you about a garden where there is a snake and an Adam and an Eve. And you're thinking, whoa, where do they come in? 
And then you've got this person called Jesus, and then you've also got the Ten Commandments, where, and you've got the Exodus, what? And you've got all these books. And it's, it's, there is so much that we grow up with, we just take it for granted. Uh, you know, I, clergy training was actually quite interesting, how much I didn't know, I thought I knew about Christianity. Um, and the same happens with the Norse religion. It's more than just Odin. It's more than just the runes. There is a whole world, and, and that's where having a guide helps and, and having books that you can read. And Again, I will give you a, a, a list of books that I have found useful um, that you can add up. There is a huge amount. You start off by what interests you. It's like you tug a string, you tug a thread, and you start following. I got into this through the room, um, and I found a world. But I didn't know that world was there when I started. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and it's been a huge adventure an incredible adventure I love it uh, was it to quote Trump a tremendous adventure a terrific adventure huge <laughs> adventure <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's interesting isn't it? I, I do have to get reading and it's hard you, you know you, you look on um, look on Amazon and you look for books that, that you oh. know will, will there was a really interesting book a, a while ago that I read. I don't know if you've read it. David Lindsay, A Voyage to Arcturus. That that was weirdly... Um, have you read it? I haven't, but it rings a bell. I know I have heard of it. Yeah. Do but... you know the writer Colin Wilson? Name a book. The Outsider. In the, he made a big hit with the, the Outsider. Again, I could have done, but I read so much, and I don't read enough. Oh. Um... I, I read a book and then I forget what the title is and I forget who the author is, but I can tell you what happens. Um, I, what I would like to do, actually, I know that sounds awful to our listeners, and I do apologise if that sounds a bit sort of um, exclusionary. Uh, the best thing for me to do would be to come over and sit down with you and bring some books and bring the work that I have done and then you can see, and then you can say, well, this interests me. You can point to something. Uh, uh. Uh, but trying to teach you everything over the radio like this uh, is always going to be frustrating because for every answer I give, there are going to be three more questions. Uh, uh. Yeah, exactly. It's it's hard uh, as well, you know, because I've been brought up with a Catholic thing to not keep mm. drawing back to try and think to myself or all the Cath all the Christians, because you know mm. most well a lot of the world is, is Christian, and then you think, is the God who is the God that they're, they're worshiping? Mm. I wonder who the God they're worshiping is. Some people say it's a Jewish God, Yahweh. And that's a separate God. And, and who is Yahweh? Even that is, is, is a big question. Are we talking about the, uh, the Semitic Yahweh who once upon a time even had a wife, if you draw him from Sumerian understanding? Uh. Um, or are you talking about the, uh, the more Greek understanding of God who is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient? Uh. Um, and who is almost like a philosophical concept? Uh, the, the God of the Old Testament who says, I am who I am, and who appears in a burning bush, and who gets angry and has relationships with people. The, 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 the Jewish God that, that I love, actually, I, I have some Jewish ancestry. And one of the things I have always found fascinating in listening to rabbis is that they talk to God, and they get angry with God, and, and they debate with God. And you see that in the Old Testament. People who who bargain, literally have bargaining matches with God like they are a trader over a stall. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, as a Catholic, that's like, oh, whoa, you know, you can't do that as a Catholic. You know, you could, you, you'll be cast into hell. And the Jewish, and the, and the, and the, um, uh, someone like Abraham, for example, or um, the story of Lot, uh, who, who, um, is it Lot? Who says, you know, you're going to destroy this this uh, this this town, Sodom. What if I can find fifty, you know, righteous people? You could destroy the town for right with and those fifty righteous, and then God says, "No, well, I wait for fifty. He says, "What if it's only twenty? What if it's only ten? What if it's only five? And that ne that negotiating is so um, symbolic of the culture that it comes from. So when they say, well, "Who? What kind of God are they worshiping?" Well, it's it's almost like the wrong question. 
Because if you want to know who that God is, you've got to become like them to understand that God and then to start to understand how their God relates to them and how their God draws their bounds and how their God guides them and how their God understanding of God. And it's like each of us has a parent. There is a thing called parenthood. Um, there is a concept called parenthood that is universal to humans. We all have a mother, we all have a father. We might not know our father, we might not know our mother, but we all had to start with a mother and a father. That is universal. But if you talk to every single person, every single person will talk about their parents in a different way. Aww. And even different cultures will have different concepts of what being a parent is and how they relate to their children. Chinese children are brought up very different to uh, Saudi Arabian children who are brought up very different to Mexican children who are brought up very different to North American children, brought up very different to the uh, children in Aboriginal uh, Australia, for example. Aww. So, you know, you can't say, well, you know, that's not parenting when a parent does X, Y, or Z. Well, it works in their culture. You can't take one aspect and just take it out. You can't take, say, breastfeeding. You know, some cultures, they breastfeed until the children are five or six. In our culture, a child is often only breastfed, if at all, until five or six months. Aww. Now, some people say that's wrong. Some people say you should be breastfeeding until five or six years. It's not going to happen, though. But it's all parenthood. Aww. So again, which is the right model of parenthood? Does that make... That, again, I know I keep throwing the questions back. It's because I don't like the idea of saying there is a truth that is somehow objective. That is, uh, you know, if I could touch that truth, then I'd be safe. Aww. Um And when you say, when you talk about God, I don't want to talk about God. I want to say, what is your relationship with the divine? Yeah, I see what you mean. That is interesting, isn't it? Mm. I, I do myself, I do look, yeah, the father thing, when mm. I had the encounter with Odin, it, um, especially feeling the feelings and then hearing he was the all father because I grew up without a father um, okay. in an orphanage and I didn't, right. even when I was trying to find who he was, mm. who, I was who I was told he was when I met him, I didn't mm. think he was because he had different colouring and I thought, no, she's gone and slept with someone else and, you know, doesn't right. really... Um, How awful. That must, uh, terrible for you, though. Yeah, it was that, rather. That, that, was that disconnect again, yeah. Yeah, I was angry. And mm. the father I was adopted by brought me up. He was sexually abusive and really immature and he wasn't like someone that you'd even look up to and it sort of ruined yeah. the, the word father even because he was such an ass. Um That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'd always wanted to meet a, a father, to have a father, and coming face to face with Odin, um, it it was, yeah, the feeling was like love throughout all of me, Absolutely. and that trust. I know. And how beautiful that Odin was so much bigger than you, as if to say, nothing gets past me to you. Yeah, yeah, and he was fighting something that seemed like it was trying to attack us all. So there was that protectiveness there. Absolutely. Mm. Hugely, hugely profound. I mean, you have a truth there that's like gold. How do you mean? The gold is the most precious metal that we have. In, in Norse mythology and in many other mythologies, gold represents wisdom. Mm. When somebody talks about gold, they're actually saying not the material, money gold that you can spend, but the, but the gold of wisdom, uh, that God says, you know, I will refine you like gold. It means put you through the fire so that you become pure, this amazingly pure material. Uh, yeah. Your truth, that truth of you meeting Odin and seeing so much that reflects your needs and that divine saying to you, yes, I understand. And here, I've heard you. Yeah. Um, there are people who would die for that, <laughs> for that to have that, that tr and I'm not saying, you know, be grateful, I'm not saying it. It's like saying, there's such a, 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 a mine, and a, a vein of gold for you to mine there. Oh, really? About the oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. sorry if I sound, you know, if I'm, if I'm the, you know, you sound quite surprised, but 
I think that's because you've not had the you've not been given the tools almost to understand that truth. If somebody's handed you a gold nugget in Earth and said, "Here, yeah, this is precious," you're saying, "But it just looks like a lump of Earth." And I'm coming along and say, "Actually, if you if you scrape this away here, and if you dig this here, and if you look at it like this, actually, it's really worth a real fortune." You're going, "Really? It's just a lump of Earth?" It's like, no, it's actually really valuable. Oh. Um, I don't know how to mine it, you see. Mm. Ah. Again, I, I, would like to, I would like to offer to sit down with you at some point and, and show you some of the tools I use. Oh. What are those tools, just out of interest? Books? Books. <laughs> Always books. Um, oh. The runes. Uh, the rune poem that I have written. Oh. Um, meditation. Oh. Um, and and actually just thinking that, that the stories, the, the Norse myths themselves, the stories about the gods, are, some of them are great, they're cracking stories, great fun to listen to, but they contain within them seeds of wisdom for us to think about. Oh. Um, and again, that is part of the culture. Those stories are not just stories. Those stories are teaching tools that we come away and that we can then work. And again, if I can show you how to relate your experience to those tools, talking about Yomangundra, for example, uh, that might help you to understand more the significance of what you were shown. And, and these things, you know, pe many people have said, visions they've had, experiences they've had while astral traveling or doing shamanic journeying, sometimes the revelation has not come to them until months weeks, months, or years down the line. Mm, mm. They will I have an experience, and they don't know that five years later, it'll suddenly go, bing! Mm. Somebody said on a post, and it was a radio show about Odin or something, and somebody said on a post beneath that Odin was, um, Odin's collecting an army for Ragnarok, which I know is that battle he has. And I really felt... Yeah. Um, excited about that and like um, inspired and I thought mm. I remember feeling that that was true and that I was somehow a part of that and that was mm. uh, maybe because I always feel that I've got a mission but I don't really know what it is which frustrates yeah. me quite a lot because I'm getting on and I'm thinking I've been on this earth for ages and I'm, I haven't I, I, Trust me, I, I'm still struggling with that one, and I'm a bit older than you. <laughs> it's horrible. It's yeah. horrible, because you see around you other people living mm. with a point, even if it's some ridiculous, I don't know, living around their husband or whatever, or yeah. living for a, a house. A belonging, or, of, of a belonging somewhere they feel secure and safe. Yeah, and I think, why haven't I? I'm sort of wandering around that in a daze, and I'm mm. due to leave, you know, in, yeah. in another few decades. It feels almost like being retarded or something, you know, I felt, felt weird about it. I, uh, I, I do understand. I, like, I not had your experiences, but I hear some of the things you've talked about and, and I can see echoes in my own dysfunctional upbringing, oh. uh, for example, of not ever feeling I belong, literally not feeling I, I, I constantly sort of, it's me and everybody else. But um, I feel almost as if I've been put in a room with mm. other people who are eating cake and they're happy with the cake and they're, oh, the cake. And I'm there and I'm like, well, no, I want to go in a different room with yep. um, others that are sort of not just eating cake. Do you know what I mean? I feel yep. stuck on a planet and most of the people are sort of... Cake eaters and you want to be out there running races and, and climbing mountains and something but i'm not sure yeah. what it is i yeah. don't know maybe i want to be battling with the serpent or something mm. you know yeah totally absolutely not thinking about um house prices and stuff it's like yeah I feel like i'm in the wrong pool or something <laughs> no you're just unfortunately you are just more awake oh right you know, most people I, and I, I i know it sounds again I'm not putting down most other people. You know, I, there are times when I'd love to be happy with just the round of get up, work, eat, talk to some friends and go to sleep. Because that seems like such a, a quiet life. Yeah. But it's just not me. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about the most arcane and bizarre things such as what are the nine worlds? What are the runes? What is the wisdom of them? Mm. How do I 
ex- expand this for other people. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm excited to hear what you said. I actually think that you've got so much in front of you to learn about that you don't know yet. You talked when we we were talking last weekend on Sunday on the other show, oh. and and you said you know that you you follow Odin. There was a real sense to me of wow, awesome! This is so exciting, <laughs> and and I can't tell you how exciting it is for me to be here now talking to you like this and and have you know for over an hour to share some of this because that itself is incredibly rare for me. Oh. I'm not surrounded by people who want to hear about this for an hour for over an hour. Oh right, yeah. Oh no, I could go on for ages. I want those mm. books. I'm like, give me that book title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually worried that you're not going to give them to me. After oh, that trust. Well. Oh, I pr- I promise you, I I will, and you will you will at the end of the day be going, oh my god, just stop, stop. I'm overloaded. <laughs> oh no, I, no, I want them. I'm like, is he going to give them to me? <laughs> I have. I will. I'll also send you some PDF files of my own writing as well, so oh, you'll have a chance to, to to see not just what other people have said, but some more of what I have done. Okay. What little there is, but yeah, very happy to. Oh, excellent! Yeah, it's like you don't know you don't know where to start. I did start in those groups, and I thought, no, nah, it's not it's not for me. I d- I don't mind meeting up with other people and drinking mead or something, but you know, I think I just I'm I'm really hungry to know what's going on. I mean, we're here on this planet, and it's quite frustrating that most of us don't. Not only do we not know what's going on, a lot of people don't give a damn. No. No, they don't. There are three kinds of people in the world, I've, I've heard. There are uh, wolves, there are sheep, and there are guard dogs. Oh. Uh, most people, when we say there are sheep, that's not a criticism. That is what most people are settlers. Most people, they, they just get on with life and make things happen. Oh. And without them, actually, our life would actually fall apart, world would fall apart very quickly. Oh. We're the lucky ones. We almost like, we go to the shops and we buy things that other people have made who are quite happy making them. Yeah. The predators are the people who try and take advantage of them. Uh, I'm not going to say who I think predators are, but I think you can think of a few people who are the, the con artists, the scammers, the, the, the people who suck other people dry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the abusers. Um, oh. And then the, the other group are the, the, the watchdogs, the guard dogs, the ones who stand up and say, Oi, stop it. Who say that's not right? Look what's going on here. See what they're doing. This is not the right way to be, and it's actually quite lonely being a guard dog. Oh. If people think you're a wolf because you bark, and like you do, you you go off and you dig stuff up, and you talk to you have to talk to these predators to learn about them and how they function. Oh. The sheep don't like that because they think you're hobnobbing with the, with the predators. Um, if they do, don't they? Yeah. I, you know, I saw it, you know, and even that, that guy, he said to me in Facebook, what's your relationship with Douglas Teachers? You know, I didn't know him very well because he lives in another country, but I was trying to get to know him, and I got to know him for a year on Skype as best as yeah. I possibly could. And there was people, I was in this group for people that had had this mind control stuff. I don't know mm. if I have or not, but they were going to me, how can you speak to him? He's really evil. And he kept sending me pictures of things like poppy fields and they were going he's doing that to trigger you and what he's really evil you've got to stay away from him but you know i was talking to him because i was curious and he's quite an enigmatic he's incredibly enigmatic and you know it's like wow you know i i i don't know if he's good or evil but he's certainly a wow you know yeah and 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 you know i can sense that i would be very cautious around someone like that as as i actually think you probably were because you are naturally used to being with people who you are wary of. I, I mean, I have read some of your stuff. I've read some of your stuff about being a journalist. You don't get to be a journalist by being sweet and innocent. Mm. You, know, you, have, you have been in situations that most of us nightmares about, um, and you've come out of it unscathed. You're a, you're a lot tougher and warier and wiser than probably even you realize. Uh, because there are people that you look at, you think they they walk through war zones, um, and they and they survive. You know, people like who've been in the SAS, for example. Uh, right? uh, people who've been in the army. I have huge admiration for them, for, uh, for the warrior. But actually, 
you and I have also been through situations that other people would go, my God, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you will be able to talk to someone like that and guard yourself while learning about them. Yeah, I was always, I was always aware, thank you, uh, Richard, I was always aware that he might, um, you know, he did send me something once, it was really, like, I looked at it and it was like, whoa, but a friend of mine had got on to Facebook and said he's done a picture for you, it might trigger you, so when I looked at it, I was really, really wary, so when I looked, by the time I actually looked at it, I was really guarded, and I sent right. a message, I said, you're trying to screw with me, you're trying to slap me down and somehow hurt me, I said, oh, let's fight on, you know, to show you, let's carry on our sparring. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And that what makes you a guard dog. Oh, I see. Huh. I, I, you know, I, I, and, and, and I think we, it, 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 we sometimes just need to understand, you know, that's, that's who we are. That's what we do. And we, because of our backgrounds, of being told constantly you're not good enough. Ah. I, I have a script inside my head most days, which is really bizarre because I come across as very confident and intellectual and, and erudite. And the script is says, I have to be perfect to be good enough. Ah, ah. And that constantly drags me down and pulls me down and makes me doubt my ability to do what I do. And then Aww. other people like you come along or, or um, like Sarah, for example, who say, actually, no, you know, you've got this amazing gift. Stick with it. Aww. And so that's why I say to you, you, you have a huge strength. I, I sense that you've, you've had some amazing experiences. Uh, the point is you've not had a framework, right. uh, a, a matrix almost to, 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 to plug it into, to see a, a puzzle board. You're right, yes. Life is just bits of the puzzle, in what feels like a random order, and we don't even have edges that we can work out where the edges are. And we've got to put this jigsaw puzzle together, and life is like, you know, have I even got the bloody piece the right way up? I know. And I, I feel that it's, I've been here too, too long to sort of be so confused. I said to a friend of mine, um, an ex of mine I used to hang around with, we used to sort of drink wine, smoke cigarettes and play Bob Dylan, Joker Man. And yeah. me especially, I thought I was going to, you know, relating to the lyrics of that. And I thought I was going to do something to help people, some kind of massive spiritual truth. <laughs> and I really thought, you know, I'd really lived for that each day, that that was going to happen. And now to be sort of so old and, you know, a sort of please, school run please mom. Please don't say that. I'm okay, sorry. I am, I am significantly older than you. <laughs> and I don't like to think of myself as being even older. <laughs> but you might have more of a sort of, oh, I know what this is all about. I feel like no. I don't know what the hell no. is going on. Not at all. Trust me. Trust me. Exactly. I don't know. I am actually got to the point where not knowing what's going on, I'm comfortable with. Because you know what? That's actually what life is about. I don't know what the hell is going on most of the time, but I'm going to be like a swan, calm and serene on top, and paddling furiously under the water. Hmm, that's interesting, yeah. And, and you know, again, I've been told, apparently I had this zen-like calm about me a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see what's going on inside, do you? Actually, no. I've actually got, fuck it. What's the worst that can happen? I've been through so much. I've got to the point where I've got a roof of my head. I've got some amazing friends. I'm studying the runes. I get to talk to you and share on, on, national, on, on a national show where other people are listening to, which is awesome. And this is a, an amazing moment. I'm just going to say, I don't know where it fits, but... I'm here, I'm doing it, and I'm loving it. Oh, oh. Um, and, and, and that's what it is. Life is lots of panic, and then you find a jewel moment, and you say, just enjoy it. Yeah, you do, you do find jewel moments, you do. And then you meet people that um, sort of excite you, and you think, yeah, you know, they, they yeah. know what it's at. I mean, there's a lot of darkness going on at the moment. It's uh -huh. like there's a, there's a battle. You know, I, I, I always think... Yeah, I want to go and pick up my little weapon and get stuck in. You know, yeah. I feel a certain amount of that. But you don't know where to go, do you? Oh, well, if you, if, you, if you follow me on Facebook for a while, because you, you, we've, we've just obviously friended each other, uh -huh. uh, you'll find me every now and then. I will pick a battle um, and I will 
um, I will use all my learning and all my education and all my ability to write and I will tackle something, some issue. Usually it's sexism. Um, uh, for example, this, this issue of Trump and sexual assault um, or, or, or feminism, for example, uh, or racism. Um, I, I come across as being the absolute nightmare liberal. Um, in that I do stand up for justice, I do stand up for minorities, and I do say bullying is out, and I will defend that, and I will attack racism, sexism, or any of those other isms that means I'm better than you. Mm. And yeah, I will, I will go into print on them, and I will take them to town, um, and I will get quite angry and aggressive sometimes, um, but try not to slip into calling them names but I will call them out. Um, and yeah, I've lost friends over that, or people that I thought were friends. I've challenged, I said, you can't do that. And they said, why? I'm just like free speech. Said, because, well, tough. Mm. So yeah, I do, I do get into battles, but I try not to too often because I come away usually thinking, it was very exciting, but I feel like I need to go and have a shower now. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. So yeah. I do it more that other people might see they're not alone. Mm. If, I, if I tackle a bully, I know I'm not going to win with the bully. But the victims around them might see I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. Mm. I'm not. You know, there is a guard dog. And, he, and he's taken that bully on. And for a while, that bully has been so preoccupied with them, they can't see me. And that's what being a guard dog is about. And that's what you do. You know, you, it's not just you. Other people will watch you, and other people will listen to you, and other people will take hope from what you do. Huh. And you don't know that, because they don't come up to you and shake you by the hand. Huh. You just have to trust. Yeah, I know some people say that, you know, like, oh, I get a lot from your shows. I never believe them. I'm like, oh, they, <laughs> they Why? Feel, I don't know, I just Why? feel they might feel sorry for me or something. <laughs> They're thanking you. <laughs> they They're giving you a gift like a pussycat giving you a dead mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm like, oh, God, they obviously think, oh, that poor cow, I'm going to say something to make her feel better. <laughs> and, and this is actually how you talk to yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, I do it myself. I'm not knocking it. Oh, you know, yeah. But, yeah, we, we denigrate what other people say. Sarah will, will give me a compliment, or I'll say something about myself, and Sarah will almost literally slap me. Say stop it! You know I am awful about myself. I really am. Mm. And you do. You have the same scripts going on because of where you've come from. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? It's ugh, yeah. it just puts puts down everything you do, and it makes it bloody even worse, isn't it? So life becomes this constant um, constant battle. I was just reading a yeah. book, The Girl on the Train. It's a really oh yeah. Yeah, it's really, I picked it up in Tesco for hmm. um, three quid and I haven't been able to put it down. I'm quite excited, but the narrator is just brilliant and she's just so confused with everything and, you know, she's mm -hmm. drinking. I don't drink, but she's just confused in life and grabbing on to anything. And sometimes I feel like that. But I think, yeah. I think lo most of us must do because it's like a major... <laughs> major bestseller um, this, um, this well yeah absolutely I, and, and we, we we constantly go around thinking everybody else has got their shit together and mm. we're the only ones who don't know what's going on mm. I had it at university um, I always felt everybody else knew where all the lectures were and I was always the one who never knew <laughs> and I used to wake up with nightmares every time I, mind you I was appalling university I, de I never studied hard enough um, and I, for years after, I had nightmares that I was the night before my exam and I knew nothing and I'd be looking at the exam paper in my dream and thinking, what the hell is this about? I'm going to fail. Mm. Uh, and and that, that constant thinking, I, I just don't know what's going on. Why is life so confusing? Mm. Actually, you know, for most people, that is life. Yeah, we don't see it. I mean, I live in a village that's all very people, you know, well off and they're thinking mm. about their cars and their houses worth millions and stuff like that. But how many of them are happy? 
I know. Well, I go past, you know, we, we park quite a way away, and mm. walking back past the um, all the bins when they do recycling, and they chock full of, like, so many bottles of wine each week. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like... I know. Uh, what are they, what, this is their drug of choice. What are they drugging themselves over? I know. There's a lot of drinking there. And I suppose if you get stuck into drinking, then... You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. and, and Agatha, I mean, have you ever thought Agatha Christie, the crime writer, everybody thinks people read Agatha Christie because they want to solve the problem of who done it. Okay? It's actually not to do with the who done it. You know who done it. It's obvious. And if not, who cares? What you want to see is another family even more dysfunctional than your own. When yes. people are up to murder each other, um, deprive each other of, of inheritances, um, exclude each other from, from whatever, have appalling marriages, because you know what? That's exactly what most of us go through. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, that's why those soaps, they watch a lot of soaps. Yeah. Stuff. That's a distraction. So they're distracting constantly, yeah. and trying to have fun and distract. And if you mm -hmm. don't buy into that, it's almost like another book I read as well, which was called A Wrinkle in Time. And it's about these children who go off traveling, and they go to a planet called... Kamazot, which has been taken over by the dark, and it's mm -hmm. like everyone sort of does things in um, rhythm, and okay. they, the the children, go to um, this place where the the darkness is, and they call it it, and it tries to be their father or a dark father, and it right. gives them basically a roast dinner. And the, the children, because they're psychic, they can't enjoy the roast dinner. It tastes like sand. And he said, I can't get yes. inside your heads to make you um, wow. think that it's it's good stuff. <laughs> so ah, it's, it's yes. uh, I thought maybe Earth is a little bit like Kamazots, although it's not as bad. Well, it's probably got bad. I mean, I think the devil's a bit I think it's worse. further on. Yeah, in his plan. Yeah, it it's so bad that we don't up. know by eating sand. Yeah. It's so bad that most of us don't know, actually. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but yeah, that is what the spirituality is about, ultimately. Mm. Sorry, we're still there. It, a spirituality is about seeing beyond what we most people see to see the truth. But it's yeah. not... You know, uh, um, it, it, our enemies is, is, are not the kingdom of the world, they are the principalities and powers, as it says in um, one of the letters. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that truth is itself just an expression of a deeper truth. Oh. Um, I, I, I don't want to go, I could bore you for hours over this, but you know, there is, a, what you are saying basically is I'm awake and I wish I could go back to sleep. Yeah, I do because I'd feel a bit bit better. Yeah. Mm. Sadly, no. You're awake now. You've taken the you know, you have literally you know, swallowed the wrong pill. Yeah, exactly, you're right. And you know that all that bullshit last week about being called evil, I thought oh, I really wanna just join in with the others who are like enjoying goddamn um waitrose and yeah. <laughs> I thought, no, I don't want this truth move, but that's, you know, that's not the answer again, is it? It's to find our own way, not to just um, listen to others that are sort of, you know, we, we've beat, got to find yeah. our own stuff. And you are a listener. Yeah. That, that's part of your gift, is you do listen to others. Oh, we've been cut off, Richard. Well, I've really right. enjoyed speaking to you. And when I put the show up, I'm going to tell you guys where to get hold of Richard. And um, you can find him on Facebook. He's been a fantastic guest. Um, God bless, Richard, and I'll speak to you in the morning. Thank you for listening, everybody.
Fight it then. Fight it with all that is in us. And may God defend the right. Warning, warning. We gotta stop us! They're gonna kill us all! See how the trouble you've started? Be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone, or human beings. Time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to win the day to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Revolution Radio of FreedomSlips.com, the number one listener-supported talk radio station, throwing ourselves upon the gears of the machine. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. You called down the thunder, well now you've got it. Right, you tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Revolution Radio! Join us here on Revolution Radio, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on Studio B. For a politician, patriot, social savant, businessman, former investment banker, and Veterans Today columnist, Mike Harris. Listen to Mike as he exposes the corruption, sedition, and terrorism within our own government. He knows our system is flawed and that obstruction of justice is all too commonplace. His show, Short End of the Stick, pokes at this corruption with eloquent style. That's Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Studio B, for the Short End of the Stick, with the man who should have been elected governor of Arizona, Mike Harris. That's right here on Revolution Radio. Enjoy your extra big ass fries. You didn't give me no fries, I got an empty box. Would you like another extra big ass fries? I said I didn't get any. Thank you. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No. I'm sorry you're having trouble. Come on. Trouble. I'm My kids are starving. Trouble. 